At the beginning of the 20th century, Greece decided to reinforce its naval fleet, whose ships were rapidly becoming obsolete due to the fastly advancing naval technology of the era. The Navy procured eight destroyers, then a relatively new type of warship, between 1905 to 1907. But the most important addition was the armored cruiser Gorgias Averov. Like her Italian sisters Amalfi and Pisa, she was being built at Orlando shipyards in Governo, Italy. When the Italian government canceled the third ship of the class due to budgetary concerns, the Greek government immediately stepped in and bought her with a one-third down payment. The bequest of a wealthy Greek benefactor, Gregoris Averov, whose name she consequently received. I tried desperately in the research of this video to find accurate proportions for anything on the ship, but I just couldn't find anything that was accurate or had proof to back it up. So I'm going to hand this video over to a clip from World of Warships' official YouTube channel and their video on the Gergoros Averov as they talk about all of this. And I consider them as a reliable source for information. Although, I'm not too sure where the information comes from. I know these guys are accurate more than I could account for on many other videos. So, with that, I will be transferring this over, and I will see you guys when we come back. A snout bow is the element of the cruiser's appearance that draws most attention. That designed feature was brought by the legacy of ancient triremes, and it was common to all warships of the steam-powered, armor-clad fleet era. Simply put, Averoff was the last armored cruiser to be commissioned in the world. Performance characteristics of cruiser Yorgos Averoff in 1911. Length, 140.5 meters. Beam, 21 meters. Draft, 7.5 meters. Total displacement, 10,400 tons. Armament. Main caliber, four 234 millimeter Mark 10 guns. Medium caliber, eight 190 millimeter Mark 6 guns, coupled in four turrets. Secondary armament, 16 76 millimeter guns. The cruiser was armed with three 430mm underwater torpedo tubes. Armor, belt up to 200mm, deck 50mm, main turrets 200mm, conning tower 180mm. Propulsion, two steam engines and 22 Belleville boilers. Power, 20,808 horsepower. Top speed, 24 knots. Cruising range, 2,480 miles at 17.5 knots. The Averoff was fitted with a combination of Italian engines, French boilers, British guns, and German generators. The most discreditable difference between the cruiser and her Italian sisters was the shape of her six gun turrets. The Averoff, encased her British built guns in rounded pillbox form housings with convex roof plates. She was also fitted with a foremast, which her sister ships did not receive until after the start of the First World War, such as the urgency of the Greek Navy to see the ship in service. That they accepted her with a gouge inside of one of her 7.5 inch 191mm gun barrels. This had been caused by a slip of a rifling tool, but Armstrong Whitworth's chief ordnance engineer correctly judged the defect as inconsequential to the weapon's performance and safety. The Averoff was launched on the 12th of March, 1910. She would be the last commissioned armor cruiser in the world, a class of warship that had already been rendered obsolete by the battle cruiser. Her first captain, Linus Damanos, took command on the 16th of May, 1911, and the Averoff immediately sailed to England for coronational re naval review of King George V. While there, she was also received the first load of ammunition for her British-built guns. 
The stay in England was troubled by running aground at Spithead on the 19th of June, which forced her to dry dock. While waiting for repairs, her crew was involved in a large brawl with the locals, caused by their unfamiliarity with the mold found in or on edible blue cheese. Captain Dominos was deemed inadequate to maintain discipline and replaced by the estimated taskmaster, Pavios Cortoristi, during the journey home. Captain Cordisti thoroughly trained his crew, with the exception of gunnery practice, as ammunition was limited to special deliveries from Britain. The Averroff finally reached Farrell Bay near Athens on the 1st of September 1911. At that time, she was the most modern and powerful warship in the navies of the Balkan League, or the Ottoman Empire. With the outbreak of the First Balkan War in October of 1912, Cordis was named Rear Admiral and Commander-in-Chief of the Halkit Royal Navy. Averroff, under Captain Sotis Deminus, served as the flagship of the fleet, and she took part in the takeover of the islands of the northern and eastern London. During the naval battles of Ely on the 3rd of December 1912 and Leminos on the 5th of January 1913, Against the Ottoman Navy, she almost single-handedly secured victory and the undisputed control of the Olgan Sea for Greece. In both battles, due to her superior speed, armor, and armament, she left the battle line and pursued the Turkish fleet alone. During the Battle of Ely, Kunist, frustrated by the slow speed of the three older Greek battleships, hoisted the flag at signal for the letter Z, which stood for independent action, and sailed forward alone, with a speed of 20 knots, against the Turkish fleet. Averroff successfully crossed the T of the Turkish fleet and concentrated her fire against the Ottoman flagship, thus forcing the Ottoman fleet to retreat in disorder. Likewise, during the Battle of Ominos, when the older battleships failed to follow up with Averroff, Kornisti did not hesitate to pursue independent action once again. In each battle, the ship suffered only slight damage, while inflicting severe damage to several Turkish warships. These exploits propelled her and her admiral to legendary status in Greece. After the Battle of Luminos, the crew of Averroff affectionately nicknamed her Lucky Uncle George. It is a notable fact that due to the um, aforementioned need to conserve ammunition, which had to be secured from Britain, Averroff fired her guns for the first time during the Battle of Ely. Gorgias Averroff is credited with successfully closing the Alden Sea to Ottoman transports, bringing fresh troops and supplies to the front during the First Balkan War. This success had a concrete impact on the land action where the Ottoman forces suffered decisive defeats. It is a hypnotized that in the lack of such decisive control of the sea by the Greek, by the Greek navy, the Ottoman Empire might have reinforced its fleet at the Balkan Peninsula and therefore fared better in the war. During the First World War, Averroff did not see much active service, as Greece was neutral during the first years of the war, and in deep international turmoil after the um, Nemrinovit riots of 1916, she was seized by the French, and only returned after Greece had formally entered the war on the side of the Allies in June of 1917. After the armistice, Averroff sailed with other Allied warships to Constantinople, where she received an a caustic welcome from the city's many Greeks. Under Rear Admiral Honest Ipetis, the cruiser continued to serve as flagship of the Royal Hanuk Fleet during the Greco-Turkish War from 1919 through 1922. She supported troops landings in eastern France, 
bombarded the Turkish Black Sea coastline and helped to evacuate refugees after the Greek army's defeat. From 1925 to 1927, the cruiser underwent a major refit in France, during which she received modern anti-aircraft armament, a new tripod mast and conning tower, improved fire control equipment, and an overhaul of her engines, boilers, and furnaces. The ship's obsolete 17-inch torpedo tubes were also removed. Given her age, the cost of the converting the vessel to fuel oil firing it was considered prohibitive. In March of 1935, the vessel evacuated Arthurus Venuzit from Cassos in the Dominguez following his failed coup attempt. On the 20th of May, 1937, Avarov joined the warships of the 14 other nations at the Coordination Naval Review in Spithead, England. She was the only one of the 150 vessels present, which had also attended the previous Coordination Review in 1911. King George VI was reminded of the fact as he warmly welcomed Avarov's captain. During the primary introduction of naval of the Britain's naval guests, in the early morning of the 18th of April 1941, after the collapse of the Greco-German Front, the Avarovs crew disobeyed direct orders to scuttle the ship and preventing her possible capture by the enemy. They cut through a closed harbor boom with axes and handsaws to let the vessel escape and their commanding officer embarked up a rope ladder to join them as the vessel was underway. Under the constant threat of Wufafa air attacks, which had sunk many Greek and British warships during the evacuation, the cruiser sailed to Soto Bay, Crete, and then on to the UK naval station at Alexandria, arriving in Egypt on the 23rd of April. While too slow to serve with the British fleet in the Mediterranean, and also lacking sufficient anti-aircraft armament for the theater of the operation, the old armor cruiser was considered quite appropriate for escorting Indian Ocean convoys. In this capacity, she could offer more firepower than a contemporary heavy cruiser, a beat with less gunnery range, and twice their respective armor protection quite sufficient to deal with the threat to posed by German raiders operating in the sector. This task also required no more speed than her than greatly reduced maximum of 12 knots. So, from September 1941 through October of 1942, under British control, she was assigned to convoy escort and patrol duties in the Indian Ocean and based at Bombay. The Avarov left Alexandria on the 30th of June and passed through the Suez Canal to Port Wittich, Port Suez. The three weeks spent there saw her crew involved in the rescue of sailors and soldiers aboard the Canard Line troop ship MV Gerwick, which was set ablaze and sunk at a adjacent berth during a Lufafa air raid on the 6th of July with uh, several of her boilers deactivated and the fuel oil spraying mechanic mechanism for her coal furnace is now inoperable. The Averroff was then capable of only doing 9 knots. Inf insufficient for planned convoy duties. So, on the 20th of July, the ship departed for, San for Port Sudan, where she underwent three weeks of emergency repairs to her oil accelerant to apparatus, raising her cruising speed to the required minimum. The vessel then resumed her passage of the Red Sea and reached the port of Aden in late August. From there, she sailed in an in unassigned convoy crossing of the Indian Ocean, arriving in Bombay on the 10th of September 1941. As the Afarov had not seen an overhaul of her boilers and furnaces since 1926, mechanical problems continued to plague the vessel and ultimately cut short her usefulness in convoy service. 
On the 28th of September, she was assigned to escort the tanker convoy BP-16 from Bombay to Bursa in the Persian Gulf, but was detached before completing the voyage due to faulty boilers. This was of the extra concern because of 20... Because on the 24th of September, the German auxiliary cruiser Corbin had sunk the Semitos de Enbrus at the equator, ending three months of radar inactivity in the sector. By the time of the Averroff was forced to leave her convoy, the Greek freighter was already four days overdue to Colombo Cilium, meaning the Yemeni would have had a week to sail in any direction from the Empress' last known position. However, the Cormoran had moved southeast towards Australia and her faithful meeting with the Leander-class cruiser HMAS Sydney and convoy BP-16 reached Basra, Basra safely on the 5th of October. The Averroff returned to Bombay on the 4th of October, where the cruiser underwent emergency repairs. On the 20th of December, she finally sailed again from Bombay to cover a troop transport convoy. BM-31B headed for Singapore with a stop at Colombo where she was detached, returning to Bombay on the 5th of January, 1942. On the 9th of January, the Averroff again put to sea in advance of the unescorted departures of six troop ships from Bombay to Kurchi, headed for Barsa. The cruiser could not hope to keep up with these vessels, traveling at 14 to 16 knots, she, she was once again designated as a patrol vessel, or defensive cover, for the sea oil in which they would eventually overtake her. Turning in the Gulf of Omnin, the Avaros lookout spotted a modern freighter appearing to shadow the warship at a safe distance. The cruiser went to battle stations over the possible sighting of a merchant raider. But the suspicious vessel altered course and sped away. The incident appears to have prompted a call for gunner practice after the ship returned to Bombay on the 15th of January. During these exercises in the bay outside the harbor, the real coil from one of the Averroff's eight gun broadsides fractured the mounts on two of her active boilers and sent them crashing to the deck. The vessel limped into port for major repairs and did not venture out again until she departed Bombay in early November of 1942. By then, she had been dubbed Gorgias Never Off by the base's Royal Navy personnel. Again, repaired it to a cruising capability of 12 knots, she sailed it for Point Said, Egypt, in an, in an independent passage of the Arabian and Red Seas and took up duties as a Suez Canal guard ship from mid-November of 1942. Averroff was the only World War I era armored cruiser to serve in her original capacity during World War II. Several older Japanese vessels of the type active as training ships were, were converted for mine laying, while her 9.2-inch British-built ordnance was no longer in sea service with the Royal Navy, many of these weapons had been moved to coastal batteries and their shells were readily available. The British 7.5-inch naval gun was still employed on three of the Royal Navy's Hawkins-class heavy cruisers, as were... At as well as shore installations, so this ammunition also remained in production. However, this was not to prove a factor in Averroff's viability, as she was never again required to fire her guns in anger. On the 17th of October, 1944, once again as the flagship of the exiled Halleck Navy, and under the command of Captain Theodore S Cormodisti, the Admiral's son. She carried the Greek government in exile from Sherat to liberated Athens. Averroff continued as fleet headquarters until she was decommissioned in 1952.
Afterwards, the vessel remained anchored at Salmas until she was towed to Porus, where she was birthed from 1956 to 1983. In 1984, the Navy decided to restore her as a museum ship, and in the same year, she was set to to Ponit Faro, Athens, where she is anchored as a functional floating museum. Seeking to, um, rem to promote the historical consolidation and upkeep of the Greek naval tradition. Free guided tours are provided to visiting schools and on holidays. In 2016, she was retrofitted with an internal elevator, allowing access to most decks by visitors with movement disabilities. She is birthed in Trenton Quarry as part of the Naval Traditional Park. The ship is crewed and regarded as an active service carrying the Rear Admiral's rank flag, a square blue flag with a white cross like the Greek Jack, but with two white stars on each of the two squares on the flagstaff side atop the main mast, with the mast head pendant, a long rectangular blue flag with a white orange or Greek cross. Displayed it downward. Every Hellic Navy ship entering or sailing in Faro Bay honors Everoff while passing. The crew were ordered to attention with the still to order, and from the relevant boats, winds, pipe, or bulge call, every man on decks stands to attention, often saluting. Looking to the side where Avarov is in sight until continue is ordered. In June of 2010, the ship was involved in a scandal after being used as the stage for a lavish wedding party by Greek ship owner Leon Persiste and TV personnel Margarita um, Castillo. The Publication of photos sent from the party by the Pronto Themenos Town Village caused a major political uproar, resulting in the dismissal of her commander, Commodore Evgus Gavrilos. In 2017, on the 26th of April, the Alvaroff was towed from her museum dock at Ponte Ferris to the Sharkmus shipyard in Elephus. Two commercial tugs and a pilot craft maneuvered the cruiser under the command of the Commodore Sirtis Charmarsirt, a Greek naval tug, and a helicopter also assigned it to the operation. At the shipyard, the Averoff underwent two months of maintenance and repairs, partially funded by Greek shipping magnet and philosophist El Alexandros Gordis. In May of 2017, Gordis, together with the Hydro Acoustics Club and several retired Hellic Navy officers, announced their intention to begin a throat review of the mechanical parts that would need to be newly machined or refurbished so that the ship might eventually sail the Argent under steam power. If realized, it would make the Averroff the oldest operational steel warship in the world. Gordius died on the 25th of May 2017, three weeks after the announcement. The cruiser set two months of dry dock inspection and hull maintenance were a prelude to the vessel's first voyage in 72 years. On the 5th of October 2017, the Averroff left her a long time berth at Portet Ferro and was towed 250 miles across the open sea to a 50 day exhibitional docking on Thirkos Urban Waterfront. The vessel was escorted by up to six large tugs and a pilot craft from Zero Salvage and Towage. A Hellic Navy tugboat also accompanied them. On the 7th of October, the crew approached the Thermos Dreadhawk 
while horns and sirens blared, their uh, firefighting nozzles shooting uh, great plumps of water skywards. An honor guard of Greek sailors and a heroic naval band were arrayed along the deck to meet the ship. After seven weeks of heavy visitation, over 130,000 visitors in 53 days by the general public, the Averroff returned to her Portage Ferris Museum dock on the 13th of December. And that will be concluding today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I know I enjoyed doing the research for this one. Um, especially with her being the oldest commissioned or the last surviving armored cruiser um, in the world. Um, it's just amazing. Um, I know there's probably going to be some people down in the comments. And I am going to guarantee you this. Um, as I talked with a good friend of mine or, um, not long ago about whether or not the USS Olympia which is actually still currently a museum ship, was in fact a armored cruiser, and that is indeed false, as she is a protected cruiser, although her design does make her look like the um, Gorgias Averroff in many ways, um, prompting some to think of an armored cruiser, but that is not a, the case. But, that, but again, like I said, that will be concluding today's video. Um, special thanks to, um, World of Warships, um, official YouTube channel for the clip that I used at the beginning of the video. Um, please do go hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you guys do not miss out on any future content. Please hit the like button and possibly share the video to any friends or family. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or requests... Feel free to comment those down below or send me an email at the email address linked below. But with that being said, um, that will be concluding today's video. And again, I thank everybody for tuning in and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.